What? Kill my daughter. <laughs> That's what I heard from down there then. I hope I hope you keep that in and your mum's so confused when she watches this back. Yeah. <laughs> so on last week's episode, I said I was going to bring you some guests. And I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> I knew that would be tragic. <laughs> <laughs> so as you may or may not know, this is my life partner. <laughs> life. Life partner. Can I have a beer now? Yeah. Thanks. So this is weird, isn't it? Why? Just... I'm like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> does my presence make you sweat that bad? Yeah, it does, yeah. You get me all moist. <laughs> Lovely. So, seeing as this is your inaugural outing into the internet, with your face and your voice and all that, for more than ten minutes, ten. I'll let you introduce what we're going to do. So we went to a festival three weeks ago, and we're still drinking the beer we took. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So we're going to chat about Latitude, because it's fucking great. So what is Latitude, then? What is it? It's a festival. Oh, g- great. Good start. <laughs> I mean, I know we know, but people watching might not yes. what, know what it is. Well, I went, and then I took you. Yeah. And you fell in love. And then we told everyone else about it. And yeah, so we're on, what, our fourth lap? My fourth, your fifth. Yeah. So what is Latitude? So Latitude is a more of an art... <laughs> Brow sweat. Lovely. So Latitude is a arts festival. It's a music festival foremost. I think that's at the forefront of yeah, it. Yeah, the forefront of it is music. Music. But... And then there's comedy, arts, uh, poetry, literature, dance. Kids go there and there's like a play area. There's a solace area where you can go do yoga and like spiritual healing. And it's all. It's a festival designed for everyone. Yeah. Really, isn't it? Yeah. There's... And you and you can see that in the lineup. You can see that in the people that go. There's a right there's hodgepodge. No... Yeah, there's not just one kind of person that goes. We've seen babies there with their little ear defenders and we've seen like older um people there, we've seen teenagers, we've seen everyone. Everyone just goes and it's <clears> great because they just get on with it and fucking love it. It's an eclectic festival, not just in the lineup and the comedy and the music and whatever, mm. but it also the people it attracts, I think. Yeah. This year was a hard sell, let's be honest, Ugh. based on the headliners. The headliners, oof, they're just not my kind of people. So was it? 1975. Ugh. Mumford and Sons. And Fleet Foxes, who I'd never heard of. Fleet Foxes, they and did that one song, one song. Never heard of them until, Five until minutes. I saw the lineup. <laughs> Five minutes and before then I, it came And on. then when you played the songs, I'd never... You still... It didn't click. Didn't click. Didn't know them. So Latitude, as a, on a whole, have like a ranking for their for, um, their days. So they'll have a new up-and-coming artist as a headliner, which was in 1975. Then they'll have like a well-established, you know, kind of attract everyone, which obviously it did this year because it was a sellout on Saturday, which was Mumford and & Sons. And then they have some random oddball act for... You know. It's normally the older people, yeah, isn't but... it? It's it's an older act, but I don't know. I mean, last year it was New I... Order, and this year it was fucking Fleet Foxes. Yeah, I can't I can't say how they fit into that category at all because no. I just don't know them, so I can't I can't have an opinion on I mean, whatever they are supposed to be. I mean, for the last day of a festival, you kind of want to go out with a bit of a you know a bit of a bang, like you yeah, wanna drink all that beer, and you want to feel like you can't drive home on Monday morning. Yeah, but it kind of wasn't that with Fleet Foxes. No, that's why we went and saw Fatboy Slim, but we were too tired. Because we're old. Yeah, we're old. We don't do... We don't do going out well. No. Let alone four days at a festival. We did like 20 minutes of Fatboy Slim set and we were like, should we go get some churros? Or was it nuggets? It's nuggets, wasn't it? I wanted, ch- I wanted churros. I think that's a that's a good point as well about latitude. Oh, is the food. The food. The food was a dream, and they had some well nice stands there this year, didn't they? Mm. Oh, that they, one they're... with the onion bhaji, the bhaji bowl. Oh. But yeah, the, all the food is ridiculously good. It's better than most restaurants you you're eating at. The, the, the vendors there. You don't the... feel guilty for eating because it's all super tasty. Like I had avocado on a crumpet for God's sake. A festival. At a festival. Like, with loose leaf tea. The Latitude Arts Festival in Suffolk for everyone, young and old, disabled, whatever. But it is, it's, it's pretty accessible. Yeah, there was people there. <laughs> <laughs> Great observation. Pink sheep, you know. Oh yeah, the pink sheep, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty, like... It's a, They're like a celebrity there. It's just a generally 
great festival. It's, I mean, re- it's more relaxed than how most. How many festivals can you go to and go swimming in the lake that's on site? I mean, you couldn't this year because of the blue algae or whatever. <laughs> blue green algae. Blue green algae. Yeah. But what you could do is you could go bloody punting. You Pun- know, <laughs> the long boat with the stick. That's not punting. Yeah, it is. That's a gondola. Yeah, but it's called punting. Is it? Yeah. What, the guy that sticks the water? <laughs> yeah. He's a punter. He's a- nah. <laughs> Mate, no. It's called punting. Google it. It's not called punting. It can't be. Gondola. It's, yeah. it's a gondola and it's not called punting. Yeah, but it's called punting. Why aren't you just asking Alexa? Oh, that bitch don't know shit. <laughs> a punt is a flat bottom boat which does not have a keel. It is propelled by the means of a long pole. Sorry, what did we do at Latitude? But what's a gondola? It's just the name of the boat, in it. Punting is the act. <laughs> you punt a gondola. Oh, does it have to be in Venice to be a gondola? <laughs> yeah, sounds, okay, so sounds we, about right. You were right. As usual. We went punting. <laughs> <laughs> punting some cunts around the lake. <laughs> so that's Latitude in a nutshell. So what we're going to do now is go through our three favourite acts. Mm-hmm. Musical acts. But we've written down five just in case we cross over, which is... Well, I wrote down eight. Because... You don't listen. <laughs> um, um, I've written down five because I... Adhere to the rules. Sorry. You do you want to do your number three for it? Well, no, we're not going to rank it. Oh, uh, I can't rank. Just just pick one of your three. My one of my favourite acts of the weekend was the freaking Magic Gang. That's all right. Cause they're not on my list. They're not on your list. Nah. How? Because I knew they'd be on yours, so I was like, I'm going to leave that. It's not hardly fair. Why? They're great. But We've seen them a lot this year. The ones I've written down are better. So the Magic Gang. Yeah. Explain the... who, what they are, what they're like. The Magic Gang, okay, we've seen the Magic Gang a couple of times this year, mm-hmm. or more than a couple of times, like, what are we on, like, the third, fourth time this year? Fourth? Third. Fourth. Liverpool Sound City, Sugar Mill, third. Third, yeah. We're definitely going to see them again this year, though, let's face it. Yeah, they are great. I, I, I do admit, like, the only reason they are not on my list is because I knew they'd be on your list. <sighs> like, that's, that's it. They I, were... And to be fair, seeing them previously at Sugar Mill in Stoke, compared to this, wasn't oh. a great difference, but... It, doesn't mean they're bad it was like i feel like their set was so much they were so much better they were tighter like they were better than when they were at sound city but i also think the environment suited them better like the way the lake stage is and how when the sun set and i don't know like this the time they were on like just really suited their kind of music it's just that kind mm. of like happy go lucky kind of stuff so how, kind how of, would how would you explain the magic gang. the magic what, what kind of music is it it's like it's a mashup of things, I think. Yeah, it's quite. It reminds me of quite a few things. Like it reminds me, it's a bit. It's quite indie, but it's a bit like pop punky. It's a bit. It's Beach Boys. It's a bit Beatles. It's a bit. You think Green Day sometimes, don't you? Yeah. It's very um, gets stuck in your head. It's very easy listening. It mm. has those moments where you can just go fucking crazy, and it has those moments where you're like, oh, this is fucking lovely. I think they're just so fresh, and there's just not anyone out there like them at the moment. Like, you have a lot of um, regurgitated sounds, like a lot of people following the same kind of trend, like that kind of like indie pop. It's cool, but like, they're just doing it in a fresher way, I think. They're just, they're taking like, they're taking a lot of sounds and putting a really nice twist on it who was it that said that they're making indie relevant again was that an enemy i mean it could have been hugh stevens you know he yeah. loves the fucking guy but yeah that's basically what it is they're making that that music that genre relevant again today 10 years removed from it really. yeah because let's face it the last time indie became relevant was when arctic monkeys hit the scene mm. yeah. yeah it was that kind of it was when that kind of all kicked off with arctic monkeys razor light the late noughties is that, what, is that what they call it Right, okay, so the Magic Gang. Magic Gang were amazing. You're, you're and, and he freaking broke his leg and he was dancing oh, around yeah, like a yeah. madman. Oh, yeah, yeah, fair play to that. He broke his yeah. leg a few weeks beforehand, wasn't it? Uh, um, Falling off a barrier at oh, some, some European festival. festival. And so, he came on stage with a, a fucked up leg. Admire that. And he lot. was like, we're not going to pass up this opportunity to headline like the, like, the lake stage at Latitude. Mm. And it's just like, mm. oh my God, like this genuinely means something to them. So And it's incredible. Yeah. Pop- and you can see how much it really means to them. Definitely, yeah. Props to them for coming through. Come on, guys. I want another EP. I want that, I want that album, man. Yeah, it's going to be It's going to be great. So, my my favourite of the weekend. Okay. Can you not read your writing? Because I know I can't. Shut up. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Jack Garrett. 
Jack Garrett. Mm, Jack yeah, Garrett. He, yeah. He was, he was sick. One of the top ones. He was the official Mumford and Sons after party. Yeah, fuck off. No, he was, was the party. Marcus he, Mumford. Yeah. Cunt. Prick. As you can it's a bit tell, harsh, really. Yeah. <laughs> We're not Mumford and Sons fans. No. Doesn't mean he's a prick, though. You called him a cunt. I know I did. It doesn't mean he's a cunt, but. <laughs> Maybe I, we should. Mm. Shall we scratch that? Shall we start that again? No. Okay. Don't censor yourself. This is YouTube, not the BBC. <laughs> I'm just a nice person and I don't want to offend anybody. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> um, yeah, Jack Garrett, my favourite. Uh, late night on Is the... Is that because he kind of looks like you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he's... He looks like me, which is a bonus. He's like, a hell of a lot more talented than you. Yeah, he's he's like version 2.0 of me. Ginger with a beard and actually got, talented. And got style. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, if you're shit available on, <laughs> Shit on Daryl Day Okay, Standard day in there yeah. So Jack Garrett, the official after party for Mumford and Sons Apparently I uh, mean, we, we were pretty tired And our alcohol had, levels had worn off but, I had a belly full of two venison burgers as well oh, But burgers. still Again, always back to the food Always back to the food But again, after Oh the- my god, the pickle on that Do you remember the pickle? <laughs> Oh dear. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Jack Garrett, we've been trying to see this guy for fucking ages. Oh yeah. Yeah. Three. And yeah. We finally got round to catching him live. Yeah, we did. And, and it was worth it. He's ridiculous. He's insane. He, he is insane. He's just he's basically a, a one man band. He does everything in his music. He produces mm. it. He plays every instrument you hear. He does all the vocals. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it was crazy seeing him pull that off live and he's like, so in front of us. passionate like it's so raw mm. live compared to how it is on the cd mm. obviously it's great on the CD, cd but like he's so passionate and he's throwing himself into every beat through every instrument he's changing yeah. into i mean this guy was on he dances around the stage yeah he was on past 11 p.m mm. well into like midnight and yeah. he was jumping around the stage getting really into it yeah more than most yeah so it was Pretty impressive yeah, to see that from him. Definitely. Mm. Would have been nice to hear a bit more new stuff. <laughs> yeah. He literally played like he literally played Phase. He played Phase, yeah. I mean it's a cracking album. Mm. Yeah, yeah. To headline BBC Music Stage. Like I just want a bit more from him. Like it was amazing. He performed hundred and ten percent. But mate, I want to get excited for your new stuff. I want more. I wanted more. Mm. Yeah. I, I want I wanted to think, oh my god, what's in the pipeline with this guy? And I think because I didn't hear anything particularly knew that excited me it's kind of it's a good back burner for me what the that, that set yeah 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 i know what you mean yeah yeah we w- would have because it was only an hour wasn't it yeah an hour set i wanted more yeah if, i would i would have wanted more i would have liked to have heard new stuff from him but yeah the tent is the place where he needed to be though that kind of environment oh shit man that was a party well when we saw bonobo it was that kind yeah. of same it's watching sheer talent and them being able to do it live and you think holy fucking yeah. hell like how do you do that? I can't, I can't fathom how he does it. Like his setup is fucking ridiculous. No, like he doesn't have any like stage hands coming on, giving him shit. Like his guitars are just there. His like his piano, his drums, his drum kit is there. Yeah, but he's like it's like it's like a hub of music around him. It's like a sci-fi cell. It's like <laughs> it's like the bridge in Star Trek. It's just there's just shit all around him, and he's just. I don't know what you're on about. Films, not my thing. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so. So you're right. Your second pick. What was your second pick? Declan McKenna. Yeah, he was, he was on mine. I nearly, I nearly said Declan McKenna, number one. Just to, so I couldn't say him. Declan no, McKenna the, was... the reason I didn't is so you could, is so you could say him, because I know how much yeah. that young nineteen-year-old boy gets your juices flowing. I know, <laughs> which is a little, not. it's a little creepy. He does not. I just think he's so freaking talented, and I just love how he's just so true to himself. And like, obviously, his debut album's just dropped, and it's like. Have we have we listened to anything else? I'm I'm fucking obsessed with that album. It's amazing. I think it's and seeing him live and performing that. I mean, we saw him last year on the Lake Stage, mm. and he was it was it was good. Okay, we saw him last year on the Lake Stage, and I didn't remember him. I didn't remember seeing him. I I, I thought that was the first time I'd seen him. Yeah. So th- to me, from from that stage of not being that memorable and sounding okay, I still remember his songs. Yeah, they were good songs. Yeah. To now, within twelve months, progressing that much, yeah, is impressive. Yeah, is extremely impressive. Yeah, from him, 
and it really sold me on him, seeing him live. I think he just appreciates it. Like he just has such an energy about him and such a buzz that he like he's like literally having the fucking time of his life, mm. isn't he? Like mm. he's jumping in the crowd. It's like he pretty much crowd surfed all the way to the back of the tent, didn't he? Mm. And if the Mercury Prize would have waited another two weeks, oh, fuck, that album, if up. that wouldn't have been on it, it would have been absolutely tragic. So I, th- I think a good way to look at Declan McKenna is so when we. When I was when we were teenagers, when we were like fifteen, sixteen, mm. our Declan McKenna was Jamie T. Yes, and I, I feel yeah. I feel like now for people that are younger than us, like a decade removed from our age. Yeah, I think Declan McKenna is the Jamie T. the Jamie T of not that generation because it's still technically the same generation. Yeah, but he is the the Jamie T of the high schooler right now. I yeah, because like he, with, alongside like Rat Boy and I think Rat Boy's overrated. Rat Boy is... Um, I think he's overrated. He's, yeah. I think Declan McKenna is the Jamie T. Declan McKenna has talent. Pure talent. Undeniable talent. And his songwriting and some of the stuff he's singing about, like, he's got he's got his head screwed on and it's really important to think that he's putting some views across in such quite... Not, like a light-hearted manner. Like, you don't really notice them if you're not really listening to them. And that's that's what I mean about him He's so... communicating with the young younger people, mm. and in the same way that Jamie T did back in the day. Yeah, like Jamie T's music was all about going out partying, getting yeah. fucked up, which is what you do when you're a teenager. Yeah, in the same light. But De- the... Declan McKenna's music is doing the same thing. Yeah, and it's kind of like reminding you um, to also kind of live a little bit as well. Like, yeah, with cause... like the kids don't want to go home. Yeah, it's like, just go out and have fun. And yeah, depth. There's depth to his sound as well. Yeah. There's, there's some real depth to his sound and variety. He'll, he'll stick around for a, a long while. Like, he's... Oh, if he carries on the way he is, he's yeah. going to be around for a long time. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah. yeah. So Up my there. my second pick. So you, Declan McKenna would have been my second pick, but I know you're not going to pick that one. So I'm just going to go with, I'm going to go with one that you may have picked or one that I think you're going to want to talk about. Okay. Georgia Smith. <gasps> Georgia yeah. Smith. Another, another... <laughs> <laughs> Another 18-year-old that is phenomenally talented. More talented than both of us combined. Yeah. I can't believe how good she is. Like... It was ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. Georgia Smith isn't necessarily the kind of music we'd ordinarily listen to as well. And I think that's that says something. When mm. like um, someone from a completely different music genre completely captivates you in such a, yeah, has... a way. Like, she's completely mesmerising to watch. She's on like the same stretch as like Neo. She's got that R and B vibe to her. She's just she just oozes cool. That intro to like Blue Lights though literally <sighs> makes you melt. Like amazing, yeah. amazing R and B artist class. She covered Drake. She did cover Drake. Set. Yeah, that was good. That, she th- got the whole crowd to be like, "Can you be my Drake?" Yeah, I thought that was important because she hasn't got a massive back catalogue of music right now. No, but she headlined Which, well. Yeah, so she needed something to. Did, Engage with the audience. Was that the only cover she did? Did she do something else? No. Nah. I can't remember. No. Nah. See, in my head, I, I, I've got it in my head that she covered Mystique, but I think she was just wearing a Mystique jumper. <laughs> so, yeah, that probably I didn't happen. I can't remember. Oh, no, it was, um, it was great. Why did I pick it? I think because it surprises me. It surprises me that I'm actually invested in that kind of music. Yeah, it was because... like, it's like when we saw Neo. We liked Neo. No. <laughs> I liked Neo. Yeah. I like Neo, then I saw Neo, and Georgia Smith supported, yeah, George, and that's how we found Georgia Smith. I think Georgia Smith, Smith is, the, is what I wanted Neo to be. Mm. I, I, again, I think it's because it's kind of an alternative sound. It's not just pure R&B, it's alternative R&B in a way. Yeah, it appeals to the masses. Yeah, but yeah. also has a hint of uh, integrity about it. Yeah, Because a lot not... of R&B is just fucking nonsense. Yeah, it's but, someone Georgia... else writing the tracks and singing it. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like Rihanna's shit is never written by Rihanna, it's never... Yeah. It's never inspired by her life, whereas mm-hmm. Georgia Smith's music is. You can tell in the lyrics that you it's... can tell when she's singing it. Like mm. it's coming from her heart, yeah. as cheesy as that sounds. But like literally, you can tell that with every ounce of her being, like that music means head- everything. Yeah, to her, yeah. headlining headlining a stage when she's only probably been around a couple of years. Like that's that's incredible. So Georgia Smith was my second pick. Your yeah. third. Yeah, she was great. I really third. enjoyed her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move on. Your, th- your third now, please. I don't know who to pick as my third. I really enjoyed Maggie Rogers. I really enjoyed Lucy Rose. You got to, you got to make a decision. I know what mine is. Well, why don't we go with yours and then I can make um, a decision? 
my third pick is not going to affect your decision at all. Oh shit! Because I know you didn't like this band as much as I did. Are we gonna say? We're gonna say shame, aren't you? I'm gonna say shame. <laughs> I fucking loved shame, man. I liked shame. That guy. That, I did. The front man, absolute legend. Yeah, I and mean, he was wearing a suit. Yeah, he was wearing a suit. He looked good. They were young. They were. They, they looked. They didn't look old. No. At all. No. Um, but they got a proper British punk sound, yeah. haven't they? A really good punk sound. Yeah, to them. it was. It was really good. Um, it was a fucking lively set as well. Mm, he was lively when he, he was, was great. Lively. Apart from that one guitarist that didn't move much. <laughs> There's with always the, one. With the fluffy hair. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think. Are they the band that you wanted to come away and listen to more? Do you know what? I haven't listened to them more. <laughs> <laughs> they were amazing. <laughs> Which but... is ridiculous. They were amazing, but I think I think I just got captivated by their performance. And we their... went and saw them really randomly, though, didn't we? Yeah, we didn't really... I, got, I got captivated by their performance, their music, their, their presence on stage, and kind of what the music stands for as mm-hmm. well. It's very it's politically driven. Yeah. So they've got that song, Visa Vulture. With the lyric, Theresa May, please won't you let me stay. Oh yeah, we did listen yeah. to them before we go. Yeah, I think they're important because I think the music they're making is important, just like Slaves. Yeah. I, th- I think... You, you always need bands like that out there to kind of send the message. Mm. And much like the Magic Gang is making indie relevant, I think bands like Shame and Slaves mm-hmm. are making punk relevant, but they're making it relevant not just through the music, but through the messages that they're sending. Yeah, definitely. Because ordinarily, uh, punk wouldn't have been one of my... Basically, I like indie music mainly, but I really fucking love Slaves. Mm. And I, I really like Shame. And it's just nice to have, like, be dipping your toe in, like, a few different bands. And the fact that their songs resonate with you through different views makes you like them even more. Yeah, I think that's why I'm more connected to Slaves and Shame than most bands. I make you listen to. <laughs> Yeah, because kind of, because kind of, slaves and shame are like my picks. They, I, not that I've got that rebellious side to me. I'm not going to start throwing chairs through windows and shit like that, or being punk. But I get, I get the the, the feeling. Angsty, like, yeah, I, I want to get myself in a pit and I want to be tussling mm, around with mm, some sweaty. I, I, I get, like you said, I get the angst in the music. I get. Yeah. The, Sometimes it's good to have if you're going to let out aggression in any sort of way. Music, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's a good way of doing it, and I think listening to that and hearing that and seeing the way they performed as well. Yeah, definitely. I was hypnotized by them, mm. Hip- completely hypnotized. I was like, yes, I understand one the music you're playing, and two, like the message you're sending here. Yeah, like it, it's kind of that we're fed up with this shit. So it's either what are we going to do? Yeah, about it's, it? it's either smash it up and go crazy, or make music about it and the, make art about it and try and make that yeah. art speak and, and the way that he was performing that like he was standing up on the on the railings and he was kind of saying like come on what are we going to do about it yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah he was kind of like trying to drum up that like feeling and get that emotion from mm. the people he was performing to to kind of um, say how important yeah. this message actually is yeah so shame so yeah shame great band great band good messages good music go listen to them maybe not your kind of thing though I, don't... I like them. It, uh, the thing is, something like that, it takes me a while. Like It took me a while with Slaves. It took you a while with Slaves. I was in mm. love with Slaves immediately. You, not so much. Yeah, yeah. but then when I got into Slaves... Um... You realise how good they were. Yeah. So, pick number three for you. What is it? <laughs> Tough decision, I know. It is hard because I liked so many people this year. Um... Oh, it's going for the cider. I can't reach the side. Do you want my warm beer? No, I don't want your warm beer that you've been nursing for two hours. No wonder we brought a ton of fucking booze back. Right, we took a lot of alcohol to Latitude and to come back with only two crates between four of us. Wasn't that bad. we've only just finished? That's not bad. Yeah, but we haven't been together enough to drink it. Oh, I've been here, <laughs> I've been drinking it. Okay, so my third pick, um, I'm going to pick... I want to say Maggie Rogers. But I want to say Lucy Rose. Do your pick? I can't, I don't have any. I I will have an opinion on both. No pressure. Come on, man. Maggie Rogers. Yeah, the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie I, Rogers. I would have gone Maggie Rogers over Lucy Rose. Maggie Rogers. Now that girl had a great outfit on. She had <laughs> that. She yeah. she was just. It was a bit she, weird. She dances across that stage a bit like how Florence does. Let's... She she moves across the stage. How Florence does. She uses every inch of it. She feels the music. She dances to the music. 
She made herself look like a weird freaking octopus. She's a she's a mini Florence, but let's face it, the the outfit she was wearing was a jump was a jumpsuit. Oh, well done! It was a jumpsuit, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, fashion. A jumpsuit <laughs> with lorry straps on it. That's what it was. Because <laughs> of the movement she makes. Yeah. The the lorry straps move in that motion too. Yeah. And that was just really nice to watch. Uh, yeah, the the music and the performance were equal. Yeah. Because the music's great, but the, like you said, the performance, it, Florence. Yeah. Florence Welsh. Or Welch. Welch. Welch or oh. Welsh. She was exciting. She was someone we started listening to before we went to Latitude. She hasn't got a lot of music because obviously she's new. But she, again, she's someone who thrives and who's someone who's exciting and it's kind of that pop music, but it's like dance music at the same time. I think it's the it's the Georgia Smith thing again. It's, yeah, but not as R and B. No, not as R and B, but it's um, a genre that's overdone and overdone badly. Yeah. But she's found a way to make it. Um, I don't. I don't want to keep saying relevant, but make it entertaining and. It's capturing a different audience because yeah. again, that isn't something we'd listen to. No, then. yeah, that's what I mean. Like with Georgia and, Smith, and we heard Alaska, and we heard. On and off, and we were like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! Mm. We need to hear more from her." Mm. And seeing her alive just confirms everything that we've heard. This girl is amazing, and she's one to watch. She's going to be big next year. She's just going to go from strength to strength. The next track that's going to drop is going to be insane. It's probably going to start getting a lot more radio play on yeah. Radio One. How old is she again? I don't know. Probably the baby as well. Do you think? Right. <laughs> the problem is, I think we're just getting old. Like, like we're well, a... talent has got to come from somewhere. Like... Yeah, and they're all sub-20, which and the... makes me feel sick. It makes me feel like I've wasted my life. Yeah, because like when we went to a rap boy gig and we were literally the only two people that had a pint in our hand. That was, yeah, that, that, was, was tragic. that was tragic. We need to grow up. Never. <laughs> Never. 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 So, <laughs> Maggie Rogers. We're done with Maggie Rogers now. So that's three picks. So what were your picks again? Go over your picks. Declan McKenna, Maggie Rogers... The a magic, magic gang. gang. How could I forget the magic gang? So yours were Declan McKenna, Maggie Rogers, and the magic gang. The magic Mine gang. were Shame, Jack Garrett, and Georgia Smith. Oh, yeah, Georgia yeah, Smith. Yeah, Georgia Smith. Yeah, great. So anything else you want to touch on? Can I pick the headliners for next year, please? Okay. So, <laughs> now we've talked about Latitude 2017. <laughs> you're going to predict... <laughs> I'm not going to predict. You're going to pick the headliners... For Latitude 2018. Oh, God, that's Something hard. tells me that you just brought this up out of nowhere, but you've been thinking about it. I haven't been thinking about it. Oh, so who? So you're going to try and pick this now? Oh, try. You got it. Right. I think Catfish and the Bottlemen. I think they'll drop. Ye- yeah, yeah. 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 I think Catfish and the Bottlemen. Would be good. It would fit into that. Um, the new person, especially. New up and coming thing. Yeah. yeah. Because they almost headlined BBC Tent two years ago. So they're due a return. So yeah, Catfish. Yeah, you're right. Um, I think Catfish. I think uh, yeah, the artists kind of stay loyal to the festival, and even if they don't return, Billy Martin, I think she'll go back because um, she was. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. They always kind of make their way back, don't they? Yeah, so they you do. think Catfish will make their way back? Yeah. Right. So Catfish, they kind of fit into the new category. I feel like Catfish fit in the new category. Um, next, you predict one established. Ooh, I can't predict. I don't know. I don't know half as much as you do about music. Are you going for an established act? An established act that have been there before. Would it have to be that, or could it be a new established act? Because um, see, all I'm going over now is ones that have been there before. Liam Gallagher, just because Noel Gallagher did it a couple of years ago. I'd love that. <laughs> I'd love that so much if Liam Gallagher went there with his album next year. And especially if they did it on Saturday, because that's when Noel was on, wasn't he? Because he's got enough to do it. Yeah. Because obviously he'll have his new album. Yeah. Then he'll have BDI stuff. Yeah. And then he'll have Oasis, Oasis stuff that well, he's Well, it's sang. like when Noel Gallagher headlined, like, he pretty much did an Oasis. It was, an Oasis, so. it was half Oasis, like yeah. half High Flying Birds, wasn't it? So yeah. I, I would I would very much like to see that. I don't feel like it would happen. I don't feel, feel like it hopeful. would, but we can be hopeful. Okay, so we got 2018 Latitude so far. Catfish and the Bottle Men, Liam Gallagher. I'd love to see... Old now this is like an old ish established one. So something like New Order, what was it before? Craftwork was one, wasn't it? Yeah. Portishead Head was another. Damon Albarn. Damon Albarn. Mm. Was he older? Yeah, kinda. Of, kind of a class. So you need you need something like that. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd well I would be because it would be fucking awesome if it did happen. Mm. But with 
with Tom York doing that secret set that one year, it wouldn't be a push to get Radiohead there. I mean, if they got Radiohead there, it would be a massive uplift in tickets, especially with Glastonbury not being there next year. Yeah. Already Glastonbury fans are looking for somewhere else to go. And Latitude, I feel like, is the nearest fit. Yeah, because it's in that kind of catchment anyway. It's got the fun, it's got the arts, it's got the comedy, the literature, the poetry. It's It's got everything. And if you had Radiohead as a headliner... I, and I don't know about you, but I feel like Latitude this year was busier. Yeah, there's a lot more people around, 100%. So, imagine this then. This is the situation. You've got Latitude that have done clearly better sales this year, mm. I'd say. Combined with the fact that Glastonbury isn't on. Yeah. So, you could attract bigger artists. Because because obviously... I don't think they'd attract too much of a bigger... Because they are all about the new. But at the same time, it wouldn't surprise me if someone like um, Jake Bug was there. Or Bon Iver was there again. Or Time hey. definitely be there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not top, though. Maybe not headlining. No. No, I don't think so. I don't think they're ready for that yet. I mean, they're close, but I don't think they're quite there. Yeah. But, yeah, so Latitude 2018... Catfish in the Bottle Man, Liam Gallagher, and Radiohead. <laughs> Wild cards. Dream lineup. Dream lineup. So, Latitude 2017, the kind of review, reaction, highlights, whatever. Highlights. Food's incredible. Music's great. Comedy tent needs changing. Toilets were moderately clean. Toilets were great. Toilets I were had. Great. A, I campsite had... toilets weren't great. Outside of the campsite toilets, I. Quite happily had a poo in all of the toilets this year. Normally, I stick to the woods. The woods, because no one goes. Because no one goes. But even I couldn't be asked this year. And still, the ones at the arena were okay. Yeah. They were okay, yeah, which is a clean. good sign. And they always have toilet roll in. Yeah. Surprisingly. So, Latitude, good toilets. Okay. Anyway, so that was Latitude 2017. Latitude, Latitude 2017. Bring on next year. So, that's Chatty Boy, episode number four now, with... My live partner, who I who I just realised I didn't introduce. <laughs> I'm just called life partner. This is life. Her second name is partner. So, thanks for your, thanks for your part in this. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. it's just me and you now. Just me and you. So, if you like that, let me know. Like, share, subscribe. We'll do this again. I'm sure because I enjoyed doing it, and I think you did, didn't you? Yes. Yes. We'll take that as a yes. So, let us know what you reckon. Follow me on Twitter at Dowell Does. This is Hannah. Follow her on Twitter at Han Says with an underscore at the end because she doesn't know how social media works. And until next time. Hey, hey! We've done an hour. Hey, hey, seven, eight! Shut up. Um, Alan! Steve!